Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com and I have a quintet of wines here um, and it's just things that were hanging around and uh, rather than just doing them wine by wine I thought I'd get, uh, get them out of the way because it's, it's nearly Christmas here and uh, uh, I hope it may, may even be Christmas by the time this video gets posted but I have a slight suspicion it might be afterwards but uh, never mind, uh, we'll do what we can. Uh, so first two are from Italy uh, and the first one, Cantina Gadoro Fiano 2000. And 13 from uh, Beneventano uh, down in, in Campania. Um, give it a whirl. Well, what it remi reminds me of, um, it's um, it's almost as if someone's got uh, something like a Sauvignon and plonked a little bit of Viognier in there. Uh, there is the um, taut, fresh herbal side of uh, Sauvignon, uh, and probably Italian Sauvignon rather than uh, French or New Zealand Sauvignon, um, uh, and then this slightly more exotic, peachy, vanilla character from the which uh, is reminiscent of Viognier. It's not neither of those grapes in there, 100% Fiano, I think. Um, let's taste it. Yeah, and that nuttiness keeps going when you, uh, when you, when you, when you come to taste it. I mean, it's, I think it's only about twelve percent alcohol, twelve percent. But it's got quite a weight of flavour there. Uh, this it feels like all the grapes have ripened properly. It's not as if they've uh, had to pick anything a little bit earlier in in order to. Uh, um, uh, to, to retain that freshness uh, and and really quite mouth filling. I'd have put it at more thirteen percent, um, but. Um, yeah, I, I like it. It's not. I don't, I'm not jumping on saying it's a fabulous wine, but I would certainly uh, sit down and uh, get through quite a bit of that. Mm. Uh, second Italian wine. Uh, this is a Roero Arnese uh, from uh, the, uh, San Vito Palasa. Now, what is it? Palasa is a producer. San Vito is the estate. Uh, so, um, 2013 vintage. Uh, I'm doing these in alcohol order. So the first one was 12 percent. This year on it goes up, shoots up to 12 and a half percent. Let's give it a whirl. It's another of those where um, it, it, the, it smells like it's going to be richer than the alcohol level would uh, suggest. Uh, probably less on the fruity side than the, uh, the Fiano, but it's got more of this, uh, what I call the waxy walnut character. Uh, so I think it's going to be one of those wines that's probably maybe uh, less about out and out fruit flavours and more about finesse and texture. Yeah, it's got this uh, character... Um, when I talk about the nuttiness there, it's a marzipan-like nuttiness. So almonds and uh, there is there is some fruit there. There's like this vague peach character. Um, uh, but again, uh, this weighty, quite full presence in the mouth. Uh, almost a certain, there's a suspicion. I'm, I'm just wondering whether they've got a little bit of residual sugar in there to, uh, to round it out and make it fatter. But... Um, I like it, and um, it's probably not as crisp as the, the Fiano, and that might be where I'm thinking, uh, where I notice that uh, something that's coming across with a little touch of sweetness. Wouldn't be surprised if I find out it's bone dry. If it does, I'll put it up on the screen for you, but um, uh, I like both of them. I probably prefer the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the Arnais, but uh, I know a lot of people who'd prefer it the other way around. Wine number three, Gert Stepp, who um, used to, um, I think he still provides wines for, for, for Marks and Spencers, uh, but um, works as a, uh, he was like a consultant winemaker, or their in-house winemaker. Now he, I think he still does a little bit of consultancy for them. Uh, but uh, he now has a variety of projects around uh, around um, a lot of them in his native Germany. So this is uh, to his uh, 2013 Pinot Blanc uh, from the Falz, uh, and it's a bottling he's done for Naked Wines. Let's give this one a whirl. Well, there's certain a Teutonic, uh, the firm, a chiselled cheekbone character about this. It feels like there's going to be a um, brisk stoniness about it. It feels uh, as almost... Uh, I can't remember the last time I saw pumice stone, but there's, there feels like there's a pumice-like uh, character that, that's, that's pervading the wine. What I notice is they put limestone on the on the label here, so uh, uh, it may be that it's accentuating. Uh, yeah, there's, there's something here that, that feels like it, it feels like it's going to be rich but precise. And um, it, it's precise. Precise is certainly the word for it. It really is a chiselled, and pr there may be a few people who find that a little bit angular. Um, maybe what I'd say to them is part of the angularity is this, um, yeah, this edge of limestone, this uh, this pumice-like quality that's uh, that's coming through. And I know pumice is volcanic. Pretty sure pumice is volcanic. But there, there is this stony mineral character that's that's really uh, pervading it. Uh, and uh, 
Yes, for those people who find it a little bit Teutonic as it is, uh, a couple of uh, things. Have it with some food, um, or uh, leave it a little bit longer and maybe it'll soften and relax into its bottle. I don't think it's ever going to be as round and uh, uh, and plump as some Alsace versions of Pinot Blanc, but um, oh, I like it, I like it. Nice wine. Um, wine number four. Uh, we're in Romania here. Uh, solo... Uh, solo Quinta or Quinta Solo Solo Quinta uh, which is a rather intriguing uh, blend um, it's got Pinot Noir uh, Muscat Atonal Fetiasca Regala Sauvignon Blanc Chardonnay from uh, I'm not sure whereabouts in uh, in, in Romania but um, uh, winemaker is that, that classic Romanian name Hartley Smithers let's just give it a whirl Sometimes when you've got wines, but you've got uh, all those great varieties in, you wonder whether the wild winemakers actually just got a load of vats and bolted something together and thinks, OK, we're only up to there, so we need 10% of something else. Let's top the bottle up or top the vat up with uh, um, with a, a particular grape. Uh, here, I, I really struggle to take it apart. Sometimes you think uh, there, there are wines you can say, yes, I can taste the muscat, the grapiness. Yes, I can taste the cassiness of Sauvignon. Uh, what I find here, uh, it's, it's more about a, um, a rich brew briskness, if that makes sense. Uh, it feels like it's going to have quite a rounded flavour, uh, but there is this, um, and it's probably things like the Sauvignon that's that, that, that's making it to have that little bit of backbone. Fetiasca Regala. Um, now, for the Fetiasca family, now how many are there? There's Fetiasca Niagara, uh, Fetiasca Regala, and I think there's a, another Fetiasca as well. Uh, it, almost like the Romania's equivalent to the Pinot family. There, there is a, 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 a black one, and then there's, the, there's, uh, there's two white ones. Um, so it may be that that's giving this little bit of um, a, f a firm juiciness about it. Rounded, juicy. Um, there's a creamy hazelnut character in there. Um, I, it almost says that there is this little bit of Chardonnay, quite fat peachy Chardonnay that's that's talking. But then when you think it's just going to go that little bit too peachy, uh, the other grapes chip in and sort of say, hey, 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 just calm down and relax. Just show your, show your more serious side. So the, the finish you're left with, yes, you've got the richness and you've got that slightly floral, honey, honeysuckle uh, and vanilla. Uh, but then you've also got um, some Christmas there, maybe not uh, uh, citrus, but there is something there, ripe apple Christmas, just to, uh, um, yeah, just to round it all, sorry, not round it all out, to uh, restrain it and stop it going out a little bit too round and uh, uh, round and flabby. Uh, I like it. Yes, it's, it's a bit of a sea change after the uh, uh, the limestone one. It's, it's like one is chiselled and one is sort of like, hey, he's just letting you hang out a little bit. But fortunately, the finish says, no, let's rein it in. Let's see whether that finish of this quintet reigns my uh, uh, verbosity in. Simpsons of St. Rose, a low yield Roussan 2012, IGP, Paydoc. 2012, weighing in at 14% alcohol. Uh, let's give this a watch. Now, Ruth sounds a, um, a funny one because uh, uh, it, when it's classic use in in France is uh, in partnership with Marsan uh, to make the, the whites of the Northern Rhone. Uh, there, Marsan's are sort of like the big fat one and Roussan's the uh, shy, uh, alluring, um, uh, yeah, there's a musky, dusky beauty about it. And here, uh, despite the 14% alcohol, it really is that uh, slightly uh, jasmine and uh, a bit of Lapsang Souchong tea that comes comes through here. It feels like it's going to be, uh, yes, quite uh, well, yeah, broad-shouldered, narrow-waisted. When you come to taste it, yes, I mean, the first thing you notice is this uh, slightly exotic, um, you're getting into that, uh, I was talking about um, honey and uh, honeysuckle on the previous one. There's a little bit of that, uh, um, you know, when, when blossom goes that little bit heady and it's just on that right side of, um, can flowers be overripe? Uh, what, I, what I mean by that is there is that, uh, that, that smell of ro rose water can go absolutely manky, but here it's just on the a couple of days before it's gone manky. So it's got a little bit of, uh, of the rose scent to it and a little bit of that heady, heady heaviness. Uh, but um, then the perfume kicks in. So uh, yes, I do feel I do taste more of the weight than than I was expecting from from smelling it. But um, I think they've done it quite nicely. As for the favourite of these five, they're all they've all had something to say for themselves. I would be very happy to sit down with a glass of any of them. And. Um, 
maybe the get step is one that you want to uh, put, put in in a precise uh, place and uh, think what would I like to have it with I'd like to have it with river fish done very very simply and it would be uh, yeah just a, it's like a squeeze of lemon that you'd have with the uh, uh, with with the food. It's like that equivalent, but in a glass. Um, I like all of them. It'll be a struggle. Well, I'll be interested when I come around to. I'll probably have a little, another retaste of them before I uh, shove my marks up. But at the moment, there's not all that much difference between them, and I like them all. See you soon.